Hey guys, I'm finally back after quite a while. Uh, honestly, RL stuff has been kicking my booty and I just haven't had the time to do game death stuff. But hey, we're finally uh, back with a video and today I'm going to be doing a brief overview of the new tile map system in Godot 4. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. Now, before we actually begin with this tutorial, I do want to mention that I have a couple uh, special announcements. So if you want to find out what they are, make sure that you stick till the end of the video. Now, with that said, let's actually get started here. So as you can see, I already have a test level set up where I already define a tile map. Now, this is from my previous tutorial, which was on creating a top-down player controller. If you're interested in that video, the link will be somewhere up above. But with that said, uh, this is basically what I'm going to be showing you how to do in this video, which is to create a tile map like this one. And to do so, we want to start by adding a new scene. And to do that, we can click on this plus icon that you see up here, which adds a new scene. Then we can create a root node, which in this case, we're going to use a 2D scene node, which is just a node 2D. And then we want to rename this to whatever we want. In this case, I'm going to rename it to level. And then with it still selected, I'm going to do control A, which is the shortcut to, to bring up the create new node menu. Then I just want to search for tile map. So now we have a tile map in our scene, but we don't have a tile set defined. To define the tile set, uh, we can go over to the inspector. There's the tile set property, which is set to empty. We can click on empty and then click on new tile set. Click on tile set once more. And then we will notice that we have a couple options down below, which is tile set and tile map. We want to go over to tile set. Let's expand the view here so we have a little bit more space. And you notice that we have an empty field here. And this is where we basically want to click and drag our tile sheet uh, into this area. So in this case, I am going to navigate where I have that safe, which is under levels, assets, and then it's this tile sheet that I want to use. So I'm just clicking and dragging it into the empty field. Once I do this, you'll notice that a alert pops up, which says the atlas texture was modified. Would you like to automatically create tiles in this atlas? If I select yes, it will pretty much select all the tiles in our tile sheet and then basically, you know, separate them into separate tiles which is fine, uh, but in this case, I'm going to control Z that and instead I'm going to, you know, click my tile sheet once more into here and instead I'm going to do no and you will notice that now it won't automatically select the tiles for me and this is uh, how we're going to proceed with this tutorial by manually doing everything. So. Uh, I can start selecting the tiles that I want to use and you notice that the tiles are quite small and that's because we haven't set the proper size of our tiles for our tile sheet. And to do this, in the setup there's an option called uh, texture region size which is currently set to 16 by 16. I want to change this to 64 by 64 and that's because my particular style uh, style my particular tile sheet that I'm using is meant to have tiles to be you know 64 by 64 so this is based on the specific tile sheet that you're using so in your case it might be different from what I'm uh, from you know what I'm using but make sure that you match the size for your specific tile sheet uh, another thing you also want to make sure you, that you change while we're at it is also change the tile size in the inspector which is also set to uh, 16 by default so we want to have this match the the same size that we just uh, did earlier which is 64 by 64 which again like I said is based on the tile sheet that we're using. So now we're using the proper tile sizes. So now we can pretty much click and select which tiles we want to use so in this case I'm going to do the sand road this time. So these are the tiles that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. And now basically we can already start using these tiles if we want uh, by just selecting them and dragging it. And then, you know, we can manually place them like so, uh, which is fine. But I'm going to be showing you how you can set up auto tiling with the new uh, Godot uh, tile map system. So to do this, we want to go back to tile set and then in the inspector, you notice that we have quite a few other options such as physics layer, terrain, sets, and so forth. Uh, now, I'm only going to be covering a couple of these features, not all of them, because otherwise it would require a way longer video and it would definitely have to be a more in-depth video, which I might do in the future, so we'll see. 
But for now, we're just going to stick with the basics. And to set up auto tiling, we want to go over to terrain sets and then click add element. This adds a new terrain set. And then you notice that there's a mode and then a terrain drop down. So the mode by default is set to match corners and sides which is what I'm going to be keeping uh, for this tutorial. I'm going to keep the default, but you can also use uh, match corners or match sides. Now this is going to be dependent again on the tile sheet that you're using. Now, for the most part, the default match corners and sides is always going to work. So like I said, I'm going to keep the default. And then for the terrain's dropdown, I can then click on add element and this is going to add a terrain. So in this case, I can do sand. So that's going to be my first terrain. And then you notice there's a color property, which we can change. I'm just going to keep the default. And this is basically the, the color uh, of your tile as you're basically defining the auto uh, tile rules. That's the color that's going to be showing up. But like I said, I'm going to keep it the default and I want to add another element. And this is going to be my second terrain, which is going to be the sand road. So I'm using two terrains in this case uh, for this tile sheet. Your tile sheet might be a bit different, so you might only need one uh, terrain. In this case, I'm going to be using two. So I have one for just the sand and one for the actual roads. So these are the two terrains that I define. So now with them defined, I can go over to my tile set and then do paint. Uh, click on the paint option and then paint properties, select the property editor. I want to click on that drop down and then I want to click and select terrains. Then there's a terrain set. There's no terrains currently set. We want to set it to the terrain set zero, which is the terrain we defined in the inspector. Now with that, we can select the specific terrain we want to uh, start using. So in this case, let's do the sand. We want to click and select the tiles that make up the terrain uh, for the sand. So in this case, it's these two tiles. We can also go to sand road and then we can select the tiles that make up the sand road terrain, which are these other tiles. Now I can go back to the sand terrain now that I have it selected and you notice that there's like a little small square inside our tile and this is basically <clears throat> So if you're familiar with Godot 3, this is basically how we would define where this tile can be uh, placed. So since by default it's set to match corners and sides, we get basically three by three little squares inside the tile, which are used to define where the tile it can be placed. So in this case, this tile, we can place it when there's a tile above, to the left, to, uh, to the right, to the left, to the low. So basically, when it's surrounded by other tiles, this tile can be uh, can be placed. Same for this one. <clears throat> and then for the, uh, that pretty much does it for the sand terrain. Now for the sand road, uh, we want to also do this. So this tile here can be placed when there's a tile above and there's a tile below. So we define that by basically doing a pattern like this one. So it's a little bit hard to explain how you define the patterns here. It just pretty much takes a bit of practice and it's dependent on the specific tile sheet that you're using. So yours is going to be a bit different from mine. But basically this tile, we can place it when there's a tile above, a tile below, a tile to the right, a tile to the left, and then we go ahead and also fill this middle one. So it's going to look something like this. So that's pretty much the logic that you have to keep in mind when you're defining these rules here. Uh, where this tile can be placed. So this one can be placed when there's something to the left of it and when there's something to the right of it. So that's why we do this. Like I said, it's going to be dependent on the specific tile sheet that you're using and it just takes a little bit of practice, but it's always going to be some sort of pattern like you see here. So definitely just uh, practice it and the more practice you'll get, the better you'll get at defining it. I still struggle uh, defining it sometimes as well. So like they say, practice makes perfect. But yeah, with that now done, uh, that should actually be it. And we should have auto tiles now. So if we go over to the tile map option here, and now if we go to terrains instead of the tile options here, and we're under terrains, we have two terrains. We have our sand terrain and our road terrain. So if I select my road terrain, and then basically I click and drag, you will notice that we have auto tiling, as you see here. So let's just define a couple roads here uh, to have something on our scene, right? So let's say that's our road. Now I can go over to sand and then I can go to the bucket tool, which the shortcut is B, and then I can just fill these large empty areas. Uh, and now we have sand in, in there as well. 
Now let's go ahead and add my player, which in this case is my little tank here. So now that I have my player added and I can test out this scene, so let me make sure that I actually save it in the folder. So now that I have it saved, I can launch it and you notice that we have our tile map in our scene. So there we go. Now let's say we want to add something we can collide with. Well, currently we don't have anything we can actually collide with in this tile map. To do that, we want to go ahead and select the tile map once more go over to tile set and then make sure that the tile set option is selected down here and then we can define a tile that we want to add a collision on now in this case there's no tile that i want to add a collision on for this specific uh, tile sheet so i'm going to define another uh, tile sheet to use in this case it's just going to be a single tile which is going to be this tree brown now i can change uh, use yes for the atlas if i want and then that should have automatically selected my tile if it didn't, we can, you can just click on the tile and then it will select it for you. And make sure you're on setup just to make sure that it is the right size that you want it to be. It seems like it is, uh, which is good. Now to add a collision to this tile, we want to go over to the inspector and you notice there's a physics layer option. Click on that drop down, click on add element, and then this pretty much added this tile to this collision layer and collision mask. Now I am going to keep it to the default. I could change it and have a specific layer for just this specific tile, uh, but I'm just going to keep it to default because my uh, tank uh, player is already on collision one and it's already checking for other things to check uh, collide with on layer one. So I'm just going to keep it to default here. Again, you can properly change this on your end, uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to keep it as default. But now that I have that defined, I want to go over to paint and then instead of terrain for the drop down here, we want to select physics layer, which is the layer we just defined. And then you notice this collision area here. We can add our collision here to this tile by simply clicking on it. And now this tile has this specific collision that we have here. Now we can modify this by clicking and dragging the points like so. And then as you saw there we can add collisions points and to add another additional point to this collision we can basically click on where anywhere where there's no existing point uh, we can left click on it and we add in a new point and then we can click and drag that point by left clicking and dragging on it or we can remove it by right clicking on the point and that's how you can remove it now let's say this is the collision that we want to use. You notice that it didn't automatically update. To update the collision, we want to click on the tile once more. And now it's updated to use this specific collision. Now I am going to go back to the default square option here. <coughs> uh, because I think that's fine enough for a collision. So that should actually do it uh, for adding collision. So now if I go to tile map down below here. And then I go to tiles there's my tree and then I can just start adding it to the scene but you notice that there's an issue where it's replacing my sand now we are going to take care of that but for now let's just make sure that we actually have collision so there we go we can't actually get past the tree which is good so we do have some collision there so collisions are working but like I said it's replacing our sand and to fix that let me make sure that I go to the tile map once more here and then terrain sand and then make sure that I'm on my paint tool, which the shortcut is D and let's just remove the trees so that we don't get that error. We want to define separate layers for our tile map. Now before in uh, Godot 3, you would have to have actually added multiple tile maps in Godot 4. You don't have to do that anymore because we can define layers within the tile map. And to do this, if we scroll down in the inspector, you notice that there's a drop down for layers. If we expand that, you notice that we have a layer here. We can name this to be something like ground. <clears throat> and then we can add another element. And then this can be our trees. So this is where we're going to be placing our trees. So now we have two layers defined for this tile map. So now if I go to tile map down below and have it selected, go over to tiles. And you notice that we have a drop down here, which is currently set to ground, which is the layers that we define here. So we have ground and trees. So if we switch over to trees with our tree selected and we just basically can click and add our trees to our scene like so 
and then if I run my scene, you notice that we have our trees added to our scene and they do have collision, but they're no longer replacing our sand. So that's how you can properly add, you know, trees and other props and so forth that you want to add collision uh, to, you know, f to have collision and you want to add them to your tile map. That's how you can do it. And, you know, so that it doesn't replace your ground and stuff. You define a new layer. Now, the last thing I'm going to be showing you is how to use Y sorting. So let's say I want to have Y sorting on my trees. To do that, I want to go over to my inspector and then for layers. I want to make sure that Y sort is enabled. Now over on the left side, you will notice that in our tile map, it's giving us an alert. Now it's giving us that, that alert because in addition to enabling the Y sorting on the specific layer that we want to have Y sort for, we also in the inspector want to expand the ordering dropdown and make sure that we enable Y sorting on this uh, as well. So Y sort enabled under ordering as well, that removes that specific uh, alert, and now we just have a warning. And then let me see what this warning is. Okay, that so basically uh, we forgot to switch the Z index for our Y sorting. So make sure that you actually define the Z index for your Y sorting layer. So we're just gonna have it be on layer one. And then you also, for your player, want to make sure that the ordering, uh, the Y sort is enabled as well on your player. So make sure that you save it. And then if we actually run the scene right now, it's not going to work because we also have to modify our collision uh, so that we can actually have Y sorting because right now it's uh, our character basically can't overlap with this collision at all since there's a square taking up the entire uh, tile. So let's modify this collision. Uh, to something like this so that you know uh, we can overlay with this part of the tree essentially so make sure that you update the collision by clicking on the tile so that it actually updates the collision and now if we test it out uh, let's test it out with this tree up above you notice that we have Y sorting so yeah that pretty much does it for this overview of the new tile map system in Godot uh, Gado 4. Uh, let me actually fill out the entire area just so it looks a bit nicer. And yeah, so yeah, like I said, that's basically all you need uh, for setting up the new tile maps in Gado 4. And now there's other things as well, like navigation and stuff like that, which I might cover in a future video. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all you need now for that special announcement that I mentioned in the very beginning. So uh, one of the main things that has been keeping me busy uh, from, you know, making videos and stuff like that, uh, IRL, is I'm actually working on a website for the channel. Now on this website for the channel that I'm making, I'm planning on releasing uh, text versions of my tutorials. So for those of you that prefer, you know, text written uh, tutorials over video tutorials. Now, I will probably actually have both options available on the website. So probably like a video above to, if you want to follow along with the video. Uh, but if you want to follow along through text, the text will be available as well underneath the video. So that's what I'm planning, as well as pretty much I'm also planning on using the website to post uh, future news of like projects that I'm working on. So uh, maybe like a game that I'm actually planning on releasing, uh, maybe like some future courses, which I do plan on making a couple courses. I actually have uh, a, already a course uh, that I'm planning and uh, you know actually making and releasing in the near future uh, so you can look forward to that as well and uh, once you know the website's actually live uh, you can probably find more news on that on the website so yeah hopefully you found that uh, special announcement uh, you know uh, exciting <laughs> but yeah that's uh, that's all I had for this video so if you liked the video and you found it helpful make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one until then have a wonderful day